My dear readers, listeners, and of course friends, here we are yet again, ensnared in the dismal web of a discourse purporting to dissect societal maladies with the bluntness of a club rather than the needed precision of a lancet. In episode 432 of Jordan Peterson's podcast, we witness a confounding ballet around the bonfires of homelessness, drug addiction, and the contentious debate over gender-affirming care for minors. Yet, rather than venturing into the inferno for potential enlightenment, Jordan Peterson and Jason Nixon, Alberta's Minister of Seniors, Community and Social Services, opt for a tepid saunter in the peripheral glow, steering well clear of any meaningful heat. Nixon's oration on the decimation of tent cities, embellished with a garnish of self-applause, stands as a glaring monument to the myopia crippling our contemporary discourse on homelessness. This triumphalist rhetoric, starkly unchallenged, serves as a beacon of reductive thinking, blissfully overlooking the intricate labyrinth of socio-economic despair and policy failure that perpetuates this crisis. The discussion, rather than grappling with the complex nature of homelessness, seems content to parade the mere dismantling of encampments as some form of victory, while the systemic roots of the problem fester in obscurity, untouched and thriving. The excursion into drug policy, marked by an outright dismissal of safe supply strategies, is a masterclass in intellectual negligence. We are presented with an astonishing rebuff of harm reduction, a principle buoyed by an extensive array of studies and expert consensus, in favour of a vaguely defined addiction recovery approach, examined with as much depth as one might afford a glance at a diner's menu. This cavalier treatment of a life-and-death issue is unfurled with not even a pretense of critical scrutiny, emblematic of a distressing intellectual lethargy. As we delve further, the conversation's handling of gender-affirming care for minors reveals itself as a stark illustration of the exchange's failings. Complex issues of identity, psychology and medical ethics are trivialised, squandering a critical opportunity to explore the life-altering impact of such care on young individuals. Instead, the dialogue opts for a perfunctory gloss-over that offers as much illumination as a single flickering candle in a tempest. In a jarring detour from any semblance of substance, the dialogue descends into a realm of mutual adulation between Peterson and Nixon, inflating egos rather than insights. The earnest exploration of ideas is sacrificed on the altar of self-affirmation, with the art of challenging one's assertions relegated to the annals of a bygone era of discourse. This self-congratulatory echo chamber, devoid of any real self-reflection or acknowledgement of potential error, epitomizes the desolation of genuine intellectual exchange, reminiscent of two mirrors reflecting an endless abyss that masquerades as profundity. Thus the episode unfurls as an exercise in the art of obfuscation, a journey through a potentially rich landscape of inquiry that chooses instead to skate on the fragile ice of simplification and unchallenged assertions. The refusal to engage with counter-arguments, the reliance on anecdotal evidence masquerading as policy insight, and the abdication of a duty to confront the underlying complexities of these pressing issues, render the discussion a vacuous echo of what could have been a vibrant exploration. The imperative of our intellectual endeavours demands more. The challenges of our era require not merely the posing of difficult questions, but the unflinching resolve to pursue them into the depths however daunting the path may be. Let this episode serve as a clarion call for a resurgence of authentic inquiry, for a discourse that seeks not to obscure but to illuminate, that strives for a comprehensive grasp of the world we inhabit. Only through such rigorous engagement can we hope to navigate the turbulent waters of our time with the compass of true insight and understanding. <laughs>